When someone in Katie's life is near the end, she has a very different reaction than most of us. I get very sick when people that I know in some kind of way pass away. So it doesn't matter if I know that they're sick and ill and they're dying or if it's a sudden death, I get sick every single time. Is Katie just uber sensitive? Does she feel more than other people? Is she living some sort of pain, some sort of transferred, transcribed pain, some sort of compassionate pain as the people that she cares about go through very difficult times? Coincidentally, around the time that they pass away that I will wake up out of my sleep or and feel very nauseous, very sick, very weak. And then I find out later that they've passed on and it's not just generic terms where maybe once an uncle or an aunt passed or a friend got ill or an old grandfather passed away. It's pretty much everyone. Katie can identify it right down to the individuals and how she felt when those specific people came to their ends. My husband's friend passed away and it was very sudden. None of us knew he was not sick. And all day I felt very ill, I felt very weak, I was ready to go home. And then by that evening we had found out he passed away. When you have an ability like this, and I would cautiously call it a gift, because I don't know that it really is something that anyone necessarily wants to have. I don't say that I enjoy it and I never know who it is, I just know I've come to the to the point now where I just know that that's that someone's passed away and I just it's a matter of time till I find out who it is but it is a sensitivity that exists within her life on today's episode of real ghost stories online EPP bonus episode 224 we're going to hear several stories about the dead returning to notify their loved ones of they're passing on maybe not necessarily before their death but surely after their death and the various ways methods routes that they take to do so in our first story a family has a history or maybe you could call it a track record of the deceased making themselves known from the other side right after their passing and then multiple operations with close calls to death, seem to put one young man very much in touch with the other side, much closer than the rest of us. Then someone from the other side comes back to give a message, not a message of I'm okay over here, but a message of, hey, you look out over there because someone that you should be very much trusting of is not so trustworthy. And college roommates discover that there may be an extra guest staying with them on somewhat of a permanent basis. It's a great EPP bonus episode. I'm very excited for it. From Real Ghost Stories Online, I'm Tony Bruschi. This is EPP bonus episode 224. Stay with us. Quite often when a loved one passes away, we get letters on this show explaining to us, asking us if a sign that was given, if a dream that was had is, in fact, the deceased coming back to say they're there, to give a message of some sort. Sometimes I really think we can be almost too wrapped up, too busy in our own lives to to notice these things. Sometimes we may be too sensitive, maybe too much on edge, and things stand out to us that are otherwise completely normal and not necessarily paranormal. And then sometimes the signs are just so blatant. Sometimes they just, they smack you in the face. They are just 
there and there's no denying it. Even those who say they don't believe in ghosts, this tends to be the type of ghost story that makes him at least say, well, maybe there's something, but I still don't believe in ghosts. Kind of inches them in one direction, just, just a smidge. Our next story, our writer has a series of experiences, a series of almost undeniable experiences, not over the top, not scary, not freak you out, but enough to go, there's no way this could have happened by itself. And the timing, very, very coincidental. I want you to be the judge of that. Take a listen. I've always been a sensitive person growing up. I had many ghostly encounters at that time as well. But the one I want to tell you about is family members visiting right after they pass away. In October of 1996, my grandfather, my dad's dad, passed away. He was only 66. He had a heart attack in his sleep. I was very close to him, as were most of my cousins. We spent most of our summers there with him and our grandmother, when our parents worked. He loves to play jokes, pick on us. He died of a heart attack. The day of his wake, my cousins and I all went. I was only 10 at the time. We were very sad. Didn't know what to say. Didn't know how to handle it. We asked if we could go to our grandparents' house, his house, after. One of my cousin's other grandparents came to pick us up and dropped us off at the house. A house we knew very well. Two of my cousins were old enough to stay with us. We were all in the game room, telling stories about Grandpa. And suddenly, something very odd happened. The lights began to flicker in the game room. The lights flickered about five times. We all, at the same time, said hello and told him that we missed him. It made us all feel good to know that he came to tell us goodbye. That's not the only encounter I have, though of my loved ones coming back. In fact, this is a very common occurrence in our family. In 2004, my great-grandmother on my mom's side passed away. I came to New Orleans to the funeral. I was living in Mississippi at the time. I was very close with my grandmother. When I was little, I lived with her and my mom. She would spoil me, and I loved her very much. When I got into town, my great-uncle, her son, asked if I would help him put together a slideshow of pictures for the wake. I, of course, agreed. I loved her very much and wanted nothing more than to be able to tell her story to our family. We told stories, we cried, and we remembered her. When the slideshow was completed, we added a song to remember her by to the slideshow. Well, we previewed the slideshow to make sure everything would play correctly, and it did. When we played the slideshow for people at the wake, the music played twice, back to back, when we tried to go back and get the music to play again, it would not work. We had no idea why it would play twice and then simply not play. I believe that was her saying goodbye to us, causing the technical malfunction. Last year in 2017, my uncle, the son of the grandfather that passed in 1996, passed away from cancer. As you can see, my family was very close. He was the first person we lost since my grandfather on my dad's side of the family, and he was only 57 years old. My son, who was only nine, looked up to him. They were super close. But a week after the funeral, he passed. I was fussing at my son in his room. He'd done something, and we were discussing what happened. I was very upset. Suddenly, a cabinet on my son's dresser opened, and then it slammed shut. My son and I both started to cry. We knew that was my uncle telling us to stop fighting and love one another. I mean, how else would a cabinet door open and slam shut on its own? We immediately apologized and told him we loved him very much. We both sensed him being there and felt the love in the room. I feel very special to have loved ones who pass come to visit my family and me. I don't often see any ghosts or have many experiences. As I said, 
I believe I may be too busy with the kids to realize I'm having an experience sometimes. I appreciate your time reading this letter. I know it's lengthy. And I appreciate this outlet where we can tell our stories and not be judged. That is just one of six stories on this week's EPP bonus episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you would like to hear the entire episode and get all 224 bonus episodes of our program, go to ghostpodcast.com or you can sign up through Patreon. The link is at ghostpodcast.com. You'll get all the bonus episodes. You can do a bonus episode every single week. Get access to all of our advanced episodes to the regular program. Get all of those exclusive video content, a fast pass email address, and oh yeah, a copy of our book, an e-copy of our book, a $14 value, free. Sign up. You're coming out ahead immediately. It's $5 a month to be an EPP, and you get all that stuff and that e-copy of the book, which is a $14 value, an Amazon bestseller, free. It's part of membership. Ghostpodcast.com. Sign up. Keep our show on the air. Enjoy all the bonus episodes, all 224 of them, brand new ones every single week and help keep real ghost stories online alive. Thanks for your support.